Welcome to the March Madness Minute number 17. Today, Stephanie Spencer is going to show how to use Answer Garden. It's a free website that creates collaborative word clouds. Today I'm going to show you how to use Answer Garden. It is a way for students to respond at once in real time to a particular question or prompt in class. The reason this is a good website to use is uh, for students who don't verbally participate in group discussions, it lets them have a voice. Those who miss hearing others input in class for some reason um, can actually see their responses and it increases interactions and meaningful discussion because it puts everything up if you were to project it as it's going or everyone's looking at the screen at the same time and as it refreshes, people get to see everybody's input. So it works like a tag cloud. It collects responses on the screen and enlarges the most frequent answers. You can adjust it so that Students can put the same answer in numerous times and make it get larger. You can also make it so that they can only answer one time a particular answer, but other people can repeat that answer and then that will also make it um, increase. So it shows um, consensus or agreement with particular ideas. Basically, you would type in the prompt or the question, adjust the settings, which I will show you how to do, and then provide the link to students and you can get started. So first of all, you would go to answergarden.ch and you would go down and click create answer garden. And you would then put in your topic. It walks you through all of these things, um, the topic or question prompt that you want everyone to be responding to. So name ideas for our school newsletter was something that I used for my creative publications class. You go down to mode, brainstorm is where students can go ahead and put in the same answer over and over and over again if they want to build it up. So if you have a smaller class that might be helpful, they can kind of pull things out and, and make everybody look at it. Classroom mode is the one that I prefer. Students can put in an unlimited number of answers, but they can only put their own answer in one time, but they can bump up other people's answers. Moderator means that when you when you have this on, the, the answers need to be approved. This is good if you are giving an answer garden as homework, maybe. So kids would put in their responses, but they wouldn't actually post until you have approved them. And locked is good to, to put on when you're done and you don't want people to put any more answers in. You've kind of created a critical mass and you're going to go back and discuss them. The length, uh, 20 characters or 40 characters. Um, students are obviously used to counting characters if they're at all familiar with Twitter. Um, 20 and 40 characters is not very many at all, but that's a good thing. It makes them be as clear as they possibly can in, um, in a tiny space. If you create your password, then you can come back into this particular answer garden. Obviously, that's a good thing. You would want to be able to come back in if you're going to moderate or if you want to revisit a topic. And let's see, let's go back down to You can choose if you want people to be able to find this within the hour, the day, a week. This is if they don't necessarily have the link somewhere specific that they can come back to. Um, I give a link on Classroom, and I usually want people to engage immediately. So I don't, I don't, it doesn't necessarily matter how long I'm putting this up for. Let's see, so here we go with create. So it comes up with this new screen and 
up here is your link specific to this particular answer garden. So you could copy that then and add it into your classroom page or your class blog. As soon as kids click on the link, they're automatically into the answer garden. So there's no logging in. They don't have to create an account. Um, you can see that this one actually has been locked because our school newsletter has a name. So we don't need to do that. So let's go back and create a new something that I will use for my To Kill a Mockingbird. So this way we can get at characterization. If I say list the best qualities of Atticus, then my students who have been reading along then have to throw some things out there. And I'm keeping that one at a small 20 characters so that they narrow it down to just a, a word or two. And I will say create this. So I might say that Atticus is brave. Notice that it tells me how many characters are remaining. And you can hit enter or submit and it will show up on the screen. And the person who is typing, theirs will show up in blue. So if you notice that it's it's blue, everybody else will be in black. So the, the person will always know what, where their answers are on the screen. And when you hover over it, it also tells you how many times that has been said. So because I'm in classroom mode, I can't type brave again to make it <clears throat> appear bigger, but other people can type it and it'll get a lot bigger. So I might say, Atticus is also thoughtful. And I'm pretty sure that the answers are always lowercase, but you can actually put an exclamation point after if that makes you feel any better. All right. So once you get some ideas going and hopefully this will generate some discussion in the classroom. When I've used it, kids will actually start talking to each other a little bit more and they'll ask who typed whatever is typed up there and they'll start to get into discussions about disputing or asking for examples, which is exactly what I want them to be doing. All right. I can also, if I wanted to create a QR code instead of posting a link, although it has the link on there also. But I could show this up on the screen for a minute or so if I wanted my students to be able to just use their cameras to, to grab that QR code. I can also copy the QR code to a handout if I wanted to. All right. There are other ways to share. If you look here, if you wanted to share to different social media networks, you can also embed, which leads to, um, you could create a micro garden, which doesn't show everyone's answers all in real time, but this could be sort of a, a homework thing or a thing to think about over the course of a few days. And then it turns into an answer garden that looks like this that you can all look at together in class afterward and talk about. The about section creates statistics for you. So it tells you when you created something. If you can't remember, uh, it reminds you of the actual question. It tells you that you are in classroom mode and it tells what you in particular have actually responded. A moderate, moderate, moderate is ex the going back and looking at the answers again and making sure that anything that you don't like is kicked out.
If you need to go in and adjust admin, you can do that at any time.